Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at IRI. Checking in team number 1561, Roboducks, coming in out of Oklahoma. Uh, Green County Regional winners as well, too, and a phenomenal machine. One of the cool things about 1561 is the amazing amount of iterations they've gone through. Saw what their previous role looked like to where they are now, and that's why they really make such a deep run at championships. The team might stand out to you. They're the ones that helped knock out 2056 and 254 Alliance at the World Championships as well. And you just gotta love the compactness of it, where they come from to where they are now. I'll be talking about all that and some of the mechanical features coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Jess, let's start off talking about your current iteration of your robot. Uh, you know, watching you at, at World Championships, uh, you were such a great alliance fit with 111 as well. So talk to me about what you have uh, right now and some of the features of it. Yeah, of course. So we have a full swerve module drivetrain. They are the Mark IV eyes, of course, using the Falcon motors. And here we have our arm. It is used with four motors, all Falcons. Two of them right here. They control the arm that moves up and down, as you can see right here. So that controls that very precise and controlled movement. And then we have two motors, two other Falcons, that control the upper and the lower rolls for the intake and uh, shooting mechanism. And we have multiple modes for this. We have a high, medium, and low shooter. And then, of course, we have our very famous and very popular cannon mode, where we go a full 90 degrees with the arm. And then we just pretty much shoot it as hard as possible. And that really helps get it, you know, that was the low right there. It really helps us. So those are the low shooting. That was medium. And that right there is the high. So very adaptive, very modular to whatever we need. And there we go. So that's our current iteration. It is much smaller than all of our other previous iterations, you know, measuring at 27 by 27 square. And uh, here's Isaiah to talk about our previous renditions. So some previous renditions of the robot. As you can see, this one is very small, but our first rendition that we took to Arkansas was a very large robot. It had max frame size, still swerve, but it had the max frame size available. And uh, it had a massive tower that was, I think, five inches under height limit, right? And so the way that worked was it had a big pivot point here at the top and had a massive, very large and very heavy arm that would swing out, grab a piece, and then swing up and do it. We had initial designs of an intake method where we would drop in and land in the claw, but we could never get that to work before the competition, so we ended up taking that off right before the competition. So. At that competition, we noticed a big problem. Our robot kept tipping over. If you went to Arkansas, I'm sure you saw us fall over every other match, uh, which was very sad for us, but we used that to learn. So in the end of Arkansas, we kind of turned more into a, de a defense bot. It didn't work out too well, but we learned. Now, we were week one and we were week two competitions. So we had three total days before the next competition to change our robot completely. Now what we did was, we kept the exact same frame, we ripped off the tower, and we did pretty much exactly like this, except built in three days. So, the motors used to drive the robot, or drive the arm, were put on the arm, which weighed a lot. It didn't work really well, and it broke after every match. However, we did do really good at that competition with that terrible version of this robot. And so those are the two initial designs that we did. And then obviously we decided we would come and do this. We wanted a smaller one, so the first thing we did was shrunk the frame. Then we made the arm a little better with the polycarbonate, like she said, and the, uh, the chain method that got it from the underneath the arm, so that way the arm can move freely without the weight of the motors on the arm. What was the leading cause to you wanting to go to this current design right now from your prior ones? Like when you were analyzing, you're like, this is, this is what's worked out well or hasn't worked well, and this is why we're gonna go this way. Well, that's a good question. On the bus ride home from Arkansas, we were sitting there and we were thinking, you know, we should do something similar to like Team Scream or something, a really simple cone design, right? And we decided when we got 
back to uh, our home base, our French Tunnel, we decided that it might be better if instead of doing only cones, because we could do only cones and be an average cone bot, or we could focus all our effort on cubes, not even worry about cones, and we think we could do a really good cube bot. So that's what we did. Uh, we did a bunch of math to see like what's the best we could do with a cube bot. If we made it as light as possible and as quick as possible, that way we could get back and forth across the field. Um, and then that was, our math was going pretty good with how many cycles we thought we could get until we came up with the idea of cannon mode, which in cannon mode, the arm shoots up to halfway. And so that's when we shoot across the charge station and into the low goals. And so it doesn't always make it into the low goals, but it makes it in the community. So another teammate or us can just come and bump it in the low goals. And that increases our maximum cycles tremendously. Uh, so that's the big reason we decided to switch to a cube bot. Now I'll pass the mic to Carson, who will go over our programming and how that went. Uh, yeah, so if you come around, um, we are actually, this is our first year with Swerve. So we ended up using um, Base Falcon Swerve. We have uh, around five autonomouses, I guess that's six, where we've been using a limelight located down here to locate our position with April tags and we are able to use Path Planner to follow through on those. During the season, whenever we were going to, about to go to Worlds, we were actually very excited to see supercharging. Um, one thing about our arm design, like Isaiah showed, is it's able to go down in a 45 degree position, which I'll show. This is something that we added for specifically supercharging, which allows us to uh, slowly pop the cube out without, um, without disrupting the other cube already there. And was something that we were super excited that was easily to easy to implement with just software, um, specifically for Worlds. Well, 1561, an incredible machine this year. It's so great to hear more about your team, learn more about it to the first community. So congratulations on a great season. Good luck here at IRI. Of course, we can't wait forward for future seasons to see what your team can do. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com slash sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.